another thing that woodworkers get all up in arms about is wood. Well, maybe that's because the medium that we're using all the time. Um, but you'll notice, especially among hobbyists, that they'll get these, they'll see something really beautiful and then they'll just be like attached to it. And the one thing that you need to remember is the beauty of wood goes much deeper than the color and texture on the surface. Every wood behaves differently. Every wood ages differently. Um, but I'll start by saying something about exotics. An exotic basically just means a wood species that's not native to where you live. I used to live in the Caribbean. So native species were things like lignum vitae and mahogany. And so in that setting, uh, North American uh, black cherry would have been an exotic. If I lived in West Africa, um, maple would be an exotic and mahogany would be a native. Um, so it, when you start thinking in those contexts, you can start understanding that you actually live, wherever you live around the world, you live in a treasure trove of beautiful material. And there are people in other parts of the world that your beautiful material is getting sent to. And there are people where you live that are bringing in beautiful material from other parts of the world. The unfortunate piece is there's a lot of unsuspecting countries that are very poverty stricken around the world that have beautiful resources that are exploited through capitalism. And it's, it, I'm very grateful for organizations like CITES that keep tabs on those types of things. Things like mahoganies and padukes and rosewoods and various other exotics. Um, th though they can be very beautiful materials, they're often harvested in very unethical ways. Um, they're also not native to you where you live. If you're here in North America, um, they are not native to you in your environment. And so I would encourage every woodworker out there to embrace the local species in their environment, uh, especially if you live on the East Coast um, or especially if you live in Appalachia at all. Um, we are just a treasure trove of wood species. Um, we have here in Appalachia, meaning anywhere from um, the Alleghenies, um, really Maine to Tennessee, Arkansas, Missouri, you have some of the most beautiful forests of a very diverse nature. You have understory species like sassafras and hornbeam, and you've got overstory species like um, white oak, Quercus alba, and you've got, um, Pennsylvania has the world's most beautiful uh, 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 black cherry. And so there's species that are just absolutely gorgeous. Embrace them, work with them. Um, the unfortunate, another unfortunate piece is that wood our woods in North America, the prices are directly affected by export. Uh, countries, most of the wood purchasing corporations around the world are based out of China, Saudi Arabia, and they are exporting our hardwoods at very high rates um, for construction overseas, uh, especially things like white oak and walnut. Um, and so then that affects the retail prices for a furniture maker here in the U.S. as far as what they're paying per board foot. Um, another thing that's greatly affected wood prices, let's say something like white oak, is the bourbon industry. I'm a scotch drinker. Um, bourbon barrels are made out of Quercus alba. It's a very specific species of North American white oak. Um, in the oak family, there, there are, believe it or not, there are more species of Quercus, of oak, around the world than any other single species. Uh, in Virginia alone, I believe we have somewhere between 27 and 30 five different species of oak present in the state of Virginia, which is where I live. And most of those get grouped into two groupings, uh, a red oak and a white oak grouping. Um, the white oak grouping is basically all the closed pore uh, species of oak, and the red oaks are basically all the open pore species of oak. Um, but there's only one that makes bourbon barrels, and that's Greek Salva. So uh, the price of white oak has been exponential since the rise of popularity of American bourbon. You'll also notice if you drink bourbon that there's shorter and shorter year versions down to like two year bourbon um, simply because the demand is high, which has caused the price of white oak to skyrocket in conjunction with fashion trends for white oak floors and white oak cabinets. Um, but don't let that deter you. There's a lot of other beautiful species. It's an ebb and flow. So what's expensive today will be cheap tomorrow. What's cheap today, capitalize on it um, when it comes to price on material. Cherry isn't vogue right now, but cherry is beautiful and cherry is fairly reasonable right now. You can buy some really beautiful cherry for much, much less than walnut. Um, walnut prices right now are greatly affected by export for veneer and other products. Um, don't let that deter you. You don't have to build everything out of walnut. 
Um, and there's lots of other unknown species or little known species, things like basswood and sassafras and um, our beloved ash, which will soon be extinct. Uh, you've probably heard people talk about mermaid chestnut, the chest American chestnut tree that got destroyed by the blight. Um, and it is no more, uh, despite the ASF's effort to bring back the American chestnut, we still, you know, there's no lumber being produced, but our ash tree was hit with the emerald ash borer, which was a foreign invasive species that came in through import. Um, and so here in a couple of years, we won't have ash trees or we potentially won't have ash trees anymore. Make some stuff out of ash right now. Um, you know, while the wood is still here, uh, stockpile a little bit of ash. It's a beautiful American species. Uh, so when you think through your wood choices, think through what's native to you, what's local to you, what's growing in your backyard. Take a walk through the local park and with a tree identification book and really learn to know your material. What blooms early? What blooms late? Why? What's good for tensile strength? What's not? What's good for movement? Um, quarter sawn white pine is probably the, has the least ratio of wood movement of any species in North America. The most stable. Well, it would make an beautiful cabinet backs, right? But instead we use, why do we use plywood for a cabinet back? We could be using quarter sawn white pine, actually absolute beautiful material. Um, it goes the same to say for a lot of other, you know, you have, you have ring porous woods, you have diffuse porous woods, semi diffuse porous woods. So educate yourself on your materials. Don't get caught up with the purple hearts and cocoa bolas of, 